On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including SpaceX stacks their orbital starship for the first time, the James Webb Space Telescope spots ripples in space, and results from the DART asteroid impact test are in. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get going. This is the Space Race. After months of individual testing, we are about to get a look at what a fully stacked orbital SpaceX Starship rocket is capable of. On October 10th, the team at Boca Chica Starbase lifted Ship 24 onto Booster 7, forming the first full stack of the Starship system since March this year. SpaceX has been carefully testing the orbital mount, Starship 24, and Booster 7 and 8, while completing a huge amount of background work, constructing other boosters and Starship variants, and making upgrades here and there. We knew a full stack was coming soon, as rumbling from CEO Elon Musk's Twitter was making mentions of when we might expect flight tests for the system. But as usual, we didn't know exactly when. We did know that Ship 24 was getting some work done on its heat tiles and bay doors, and that Booster 7 was getting what Elon referred to as robustness upgrades in preparation for the stresses of a possible 33-engine burn. So, on October 10th, when Booster 7 was once again rolled out of the wide bay for another test, it looked like that big burn was the purpose. The launch mount's hold-down clamps, which secure the booster to the mount, were modified the week previously to help contain larger engine blasts, and they completed a brief release test before Booster 7 was moved onto the mount. These clamps are designed to hold the booster steady, but also must release simultaneously during a launch for everything to work. A quick series of clunks later, and the testing was complete. The hold-down clamps were good to go. Then, after Booster 7 was lifted onto the mount using the chopstick arms, it got some attention in the form of replacing its middle Raptor engine, completing the 33-engine array. A full 33-engine test was looking more like a possibility, but then something unexpected happened. SpaceX wheeled out Ship 24. The flurry of work in the last couple of months at the Texas facility has been leading many observers to guess that a full stack would be coming, but as the arms lowered to pick up S24, it was still exciting to see this process happening so soon. It took about an hour to lift Ship 24 into position, and about three hours in total to get the whole process done. Starship has a dry mass of between 120 and 150 tons while the booster itself has a dry mass of between 170 and 220 tons. So, the SpaceX team were clearly taking the time to get this right, rather than showing off the intended speed of the Mechazilla stacking system. Everything seemed to have gone smoothly, and now the giant 120-meter rocket is standing on the orbital launch mount. It still feels unbelievable to see the whole thing standing there, as if it could lift off at any moment. Okay, so they've successfully stacked the most likely test vehicles, but there's a couple of pivotal tests left to do before the first launch. So, what is the plan here? Well, the full 33 engine burn is definitely on the table. SpaceX hasn't spent the last couple of months upgrading the launch mount to not attempt one. And there's no better full engine test than one with a full stack's worth of weight. It's also likely that SpaceX wouldn't have stacked the whole vehicle if they weren't prepared to try a full wet dress rehearsal, filling the vehicle's propellant tanks in a simulation of what a launch day might look like. Again, no better time to do that test than with a full stack on the mount. Now, here's where things get hazy, because this is SpaceX we are talking about, and while they've been cautious ever since that booster explosion back in July, CEO Elon Musk has said, that there's a possibility of a launch attempt in late October. So while it's far more likely we won't be seeing liftoff until November, we should remember that SpaceX has more than enough Starship test vehicles to take risks, and they already have FAA permission to attempt five launches. So they could attempt to fly this stack if the wet dress rehearsal goes well. That being said, it is far more likely that we're going to see the vehicle destacked just after that test and sent for a last round of inspections. 
Booster 7 just received robustness upgrades, including extra blast shielding around the engine cows, so it would be odd to do a full 33 engine burn and a wet dress rehearsal without checking to see how the booster held up under that stress. But fear not, SpaceX is obviously attempting to push for some suborbital launches before the end of this year, and they are preparing for a quick cadence of follow-up launches too. Lots of extra parts, equipment, and completed variants of boosters and starships are waiting in the wings for their shot on the mounts. It's likely that once the first launch has a chance to have its data examined, SpaceX is going to make use of their extensive preparations to keep launching until they get it right. The James Webb Space Telescope keeps bringing us amazing new images of the cosmos week after week, and a new capture from over 5,000 light years away is causing waves in astronomy. What you're seeing is ripples of gas and dust blown into space by the dying gasps of a very hot star. But we don't see patterns like this all the time, and that's mostly down to the James Webb's delicate machinery. These images were taken with the telescope's MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument, and allowed for this much clearer view of a dust wave that previously looked like two ripples. The reason for these patterns has to do with the unique nature of this system. Wolf Rayette 140 is a binary star system made up of two Type O stars. Type O's are very large, typically 15 to 90 times the mass of our sun, and they burn much hotter. But this system is even more unique, as one of the twins is a rare Wolf Rayette. Larger Type O stars often collapse into black holes due to their mass, but before they do, some Type O's transform into what's called a Wolf Rayette star burning hotter even than other Type O's, and shedding giant waves of gas and dust as it rages. This is where the twin comes in. The Type O twin to the Wolf Rayette in system WR140 is a younger one, and its gravity is helping shed the dust off in this ripple pattern. NASA believes this is down to the two stars holding an elongated orbit so the dust can only form when the two stars swing close enough to each other, about the distance from the Earth to our Sun. So the ripples are showing the orbit of the stars, each ring forming as the pair's solar winds meet and compress into waves of dust. Aside from looking gorgeous, this process of shedding dust is important for new star and planet formation. Wolf Rayettes are hydrogen-burning stars, and so, when they die, they push out all the necessary ingredients for forming new stars and planets, like hydrogen and carbon. Wolf Rayettes are rare to view because they burn out relatively quickly, but understanding how new stars and planets form is hugely important for how we understand our universe. Scientists believe our own sun was likely formed from processes just like this one and is another great example of how the James Webb is helping us catalog these rare formations. Just over two weeks ago, NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, slammed a satellite into a space rock to see if we could measurably change its orbit. It took a bit, but the numbers are in and show that DART not only worked, but it exceeded NASA's estimations by almost three times. The plan had been to take the roughly 570 kilogram impactor satellite and smash it into the asteroid Dimorphos, a 160 meter wide rock orbiting the larger asteroid Didymus. On September 26th, the vending machine sized satellite slammed into Dimorphos at over 22,000 kilometers per hour and hit perfectly on target. NASA had predicted that at this mass, DART should be able to lower the orbital period, the time Dimorphos takes to orbit its partner by about 10 minutes. The results show that the little satellite managed to scrape about 32 minutes off of that time, bringing the two asteroids closer together. This is how the test was designed and why these particular asteroids were picked. Didymus and Dimorphos are an eclipsing binary system, which means that Dimorphos passes in front and behind its partner as we view them from the Earth. This makes it very easy for us to measure the distance of their orbits and made the results of this test easier to measure. 
and their size was also a big factor. Dimorphus and Didymus are over 11 million kilometers from Earth and in no danger of causing us problems, but Dimorphus is about 160 meters in diameter, which is right in the sweet spot for common asteroids that could cause major damage if one were to hit us. NASA doesn't know of any asteroids of this size or larger that have any chance of hitting us for at least the next 100 years, but they estimate that we've only found about 40% of near-Earth objects that fall into this category. So we need to be ready for when we do. And thanks to DART, we know that we can easily send a small mass impactor to do the job. DART's place in history as the first successful test of humanity's asteroid defense system cannot be understated. We now know for sure that we can defend ourselves if we catch an incoming object quickly enough. A smashing success. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.